first memory of Emmy? Well, I did spend uh, a lot of it filled with alcohol. Well, we met at school uh, 19 years ago now, and one of my first memories is when her parents kindly took me to uh, Martin's Golf Club for a barbecue when we were eight, and Rowan allowed us to have two Diet Cokes, and we got very excitable because of this and Rowan had to drop me off home um, and apologise to my mother which was possibly the first time she'd met her. Seeing her Dougal pencil case and being really jealous of it. The first, first memory of Immy was um, hearing her cry and she was about five minutes old and I held her and she was so hot almost the feet was boiling and she was all there she had ten fingers she had ten toes and it was wonderful. Alex was the first person I met when uh, we went to uni. Um, I think he was, I'm not overly sure, he might have been in his pants, probably was. My first vivid memory of Alex is, yeah, basically to start bollock naked, dancing around madly to Arcade Fire. That's pretty much Alex in a nutshell. My first impression was Alex walking in, giving me a massive bear hug, within 10 minutes he was naked. Immy, absolutely lovely. Got on with her straight away and, you know, I consider her one of my closest friends now, so it's nice to know her as Alex's other half, which is Andy, one of Andy's close friends, but she's sort of my friend separately as well. My first vivid memory of Alex, which I don't think his mother is going to like, is when Imogen dyed his hair red for the Reading Festival, which took place in our bathroom. The first time we, like, proper hung out was... Um before Latitude Festival, Dave was at work and they picked me up from Dave's parents' house um, and put bunny ears on me. <laughs> um, and then after that day, I found out that they said that I could be Dave's girlfriend, that I was accepted. <laughs> there was the fateful night of a uh going to Subway City in Birmingham. My first memory of Emmy is uh, in Subway City, uh, red dress. There was some thumping music, there was uh, drinks are flowing, and uh, there's a beautiful picture, which I'll paint for you now, of Alex embracing Emmy. Being absolutely necked by Alex Spencer. Um, and obviously, because of the difference in height, it was beautiful. <laughs> I don't remember too much. I just remember them uh, getting on well, and then obviously getting together. What were they doing? <laughs> they were they were chatting, and then and then possibly kissing. <laughs> just like just like some some normal kissing, perfectly above board kissing. <laughs> All very impressed. Um, you know, the lady that can finally tame the beast. I, I'd say it was like a giraffe uh, getting off with a puppy. That's how I'd describe it. I think it was very early in March 2008, or maybe end of Feb, and I remember being summoned to go up and meet this boy. Um, and so I got the train up to Birmingham, and they were having a flat party in halls, and I don't think I'd ever been in halls before. Um, and my first memory of Alex is meeting him and all of his friends, and it was very loud and very fun. And there was lots of very brightly coloured drinks. Um, and I think Alex was wearing a bright green T-shirt, and we just had loads of fun, and I thought he's a lovely guy. I can remember when we first met up with Alex and he sneakily told me about Immy. I think we were in KFC and um, we were told not, well I was told to keep it a secret from Mum, but he had a, a big smile on his face. I don't think she actually told me in so many words that there was a new boy on the scene. I think he just became part of the conversation. And it was a bit of a regular thing for me to join Alex in Birmingham for lunch on a Thursday. And yes, the next time you were here, Mum, you were going to meet Immy, which was very nice. She was a sweet little 19-year-old at that stage, quite young and very studenty. Um, but little did I know that she'd still be here nine years later, which is rather lovely. So yeah, a good beginning. My favourite thing about Alex, uh, apart from the fact 
uh, that he is always willing to consider getting fried chicken in any context. Um, is the way he makes me laugh. But then he makes me think. Oh, I've got lots of favourite things about Alex. <laughs> I love his way with words, his artistic abilities, and some of the drawings he's done over the years for cards and such like. I also love the way he cares about Imogen and cares for her. But then he makes me laugh again. But then he makes me cry. He's, he's one of my favourite people to read. Uh, and, I, and I really enjoy his work and so uh, having the benefit of being his friend and getting to just talk to him about stuff is, is really great and I think it's made me a smarter, better, uh, creative person and, and, I, and I really love that. But then he makes me laugh again and then he takes his top off. Well, I was going to say I don't have any favourite things about Alex because I don't really like the guy but I think <laughs> everyone's going to say that though, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> My favourite thing about Alex is that I don't think I'd be the person I am today if it wasn't for him. He has got me into, almost unwittingly at points, all the music I like, the comics I like, the books I like. I trust his judgement completely on everything. Um, and I can't ask for more than that in a friend. My favourite thing about Immy is She's a very calming presence, you know. I think she has to be dealing with Alex, but um, I think even when she's under under pressure or stress, she always just seems to have this kind of aura of, of grace about her. When she makes her mind up for something, she goes for it. There are lots of things I love about her, but that's one I do more than like. I respect that in her because lots of people haven't got that, and uh, but she will see things through, and I think that's a great trait to have. My favourite thing about Imi is that she introduced me to Halloumi uh, and that has made my life roughly ten times better. The thing about Imi that, that I love and that I appreciate the most as well is how welcoming she is. Uh, that she's the best friend that I could ever ask for. I also feel like I can always be honest with Imi um, about circumstances. Um, and as long as we talk about it like sensibly, we can come to the best possible solution for everybody, which can be difficult sometimes with the rest of you guys, because when I try and put my views forward, sometimes they just get shot down. <laughs> um, and she's always been there. She's a very loyal friend. She's always consistently been there through the last 19 years. My favorite thing about the pair of them is that they still uh, have me around even though I once tried to burn down their flat with kitchen rock. Like, Alex and Immy are just two of the kindest, most genuine people that I've ever met. Um, it's clear that they deserve to be together and are perfect for one another. Would it, would it, would it be inappropriate to say that Alex, Immy and Lucky are my favourite threesome? Um, <laughs> I don't think there's ever really been any doubt that, you know, they would stay together and the inevitable would happen. They're right for each other because they seem so happy and comfortable together. It's for a long time really, I thought these two are getting closer and closer by the year. I don't think anything's really going to separate them. They've integrated each other's lives beautifully, which is, I think, always a very important thing. Alex has taken a picture of Imogen at a barbecue. And I've taken lots of pictures of Imogen in her life, and I just realised that she was smiling in a totally different way than anything I'd managed to capture on her. And I came to the conclusion that it either meant that Alex was an extremely good photographer, or it meant that they were very happy together because he got something out of her that I'd never managed to do. For me, Imogen and Alex have always been just so well suited, and they are each other's best friends. There was never a moment where I questioned that they wouldn't be together forever. They are the foundation against which all of our friendship group sits. And I think all of our lives are enriched massively by the two of them being together. So they're always interested in what the other person has to say. It's not just that they care about each other, it's that they're, 
they're passionate about the other person. Can't imagine them being with more appropriate people. <laughs> Even though Alex is one of the most obnoxious, disgusting, foul nerds that I've ever met, I am nothing but pleased that him and Imi are getting married and I think it's great news and I'm really pleased with them both. I can't think of a couple who are as well suited as you two are. Um, you complete each other. Continue doing what you've done in the past um, and don't let lucky rule the roost. The life you've already created is wonderful, it's brilliant. I'm sure it will be amazing. You're perfect for each other, so I, can, I can't imagine that it will be anything less than spectacular. Don't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, my message would just be keep doing what you're doing. Keep um, loving and stroking each other. You know, don't, don't take out all your affections on the dog because uh, Amy's hair is the softest hair I've probably ever touched. I mean, I don't know what conditioner she uses, but my God, um, that's good. I really look forward to, to getting to know both of you even better. And I hope that we get to spend a lot months, more days in the park together. <laughs> I think given how long Alex and Amy have been together and how good they are for each other. I don't think they really need any advice for their marriage. I think they're gonna be absolutely fine. I think they're gonna really enjoy it. Our thoughts on Alex and Amy are, we really look forward to coming down to London and seeing you. And equally, we love it when you come home and spend some time with us and the doggy. <laughs> <laughs>